Alright. Alright, final piece of Reflections of the Moon. Final, final piece of Reflections of the Moon. reminds me so I don't forget I'm gonna move the camera move the camera um, hold on. I'm gonna move it to the bottom right I'm gonna move it to the bottom right so it doesn't block any it doesn't block any um, dialogue and words because I know you can hear me read it, but sometimes you just want to read it for yourself. So it's just by pressing the pause button and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm trying to be more considerate of that and mindful of that as well. So I'm going to briefly shift the camera, the webcam to the bottom right so it doesn't block out any dialogue or anything like that. Okay. All right. Final chapter of Reflections of the Moon. Chapter four. Low tide. Hmm? Now, this is interesting. Interesting. I remember my hardest fought battle in the arenas. It was myself and another left in the match. All out of bullets with only our blades left in hand. Fatigue had overtaken me. It was all I could do to keep my weapons up. But the crowd called my name, urging me to fight back and take the victory. I felt their energy. It helped me find a strength within myself I had not realized was there. I rose to my feet and fought. I hardly recall how, but I prevailed because of their cries. They wanted to be entertained, to be inspired, and so at my performance they shouted, Encore! Encore! Now I sit on the stage in solitude, in the place where I made my name after the world cursed, after the world cursed it. Now a rich and powerful man exploits our moon and they cursed me again. Encore. It is ironic now. I might laugh, but even my parents will not stand behind me. Someone crosses the stage behind me. I let out a sigh. I'm not ready to face the voices again to hear their criticisms. Yeah. Come to bask in your former glory. I turn to see Catalyst standing nearby. Of course, the strongest of my dissenters would be the one to appear. I should go. You don't have to leave. You were here first. I have no desire to argue with you. I know my presence is unwanted. You're not the first to want me gone today. I begin to depart, but her next word gives me pause. Stay. Why? Because I think you need this place as much as I do. She comes to stand behind me, beside me. <laughs> this, this is one of the best places on Boris to see the moon, Cleo in all her glory. I was not aware. I saw a silence grows between us as we look upon the moon above the arena, its fractured pieces drifting away, however, imperceptibly. It has never been whole in my lifetime, but I, was my, I saw myself in its image, something beautiful and powerful that never ceases to rise despite its brokenness. Seeing it now, it just looks sad. I don't think you're a bad person, you know? Is that so? But there are consequences to what you did, and you have to face them. Oh. I just wanted to do the right thing. But you didn't. She does not speak, but I can hear the words all the same. 
You really think what you did was the right thing? I thought it was what the people wanted me to do. That it was the right way to help after my interview with Miss Stone. I did not want to be the person she said I was. I've been working on Cleo's restoration for the last 15 years alongside hundreds of others. And I don't know if she's getting any better. Still, it's what I believe has helped her the most. Not violence and destruction. I've already seen where that leads. Uh, you pushed to bring the games here because you thought it was what others wanted. Big move for something you're not even sure you believed in. I look into the skies, gazing upon Cleo. There are lights, not stars, but ships in my lifetime. I can only recall that much traffic going to the moon where I, I was scarcely more than a three-year-old. I was convinced, or perhaps convinced myself, it was the best way forward. I acted too rashly. But I have to believe it was not for nothing. The moon is receiving resources it needs. Oh. At the cost of its people. It means the people of Boreas will be safer. Oh. Screw Boreas. You cannot mean that. Of course I do. You are an outcast, but you managed to build your own place. You can fit it. A lot of us didn't have the skills you had. Or the support behind us. We needed to make that happen. Cleo welcomed us with open arms. She let us be ourselves. We found a community in each other. Those are the people I fight to protect. Well, what about everyone else? Why would you even care about them after so many said you were cursed? Because my mother and my father, their love kept, my, kept me warm. And I know that every person in our planet gives that gift to someone else. That is what I want to protect. She watches me for a long moment, then extends her hand. Take your hand. We shake. I will do better next time, I promise. I'll be I'll be here to see. You. The end. Well. That's it. <laughs> Samara. Well, the end. That concludes uh, the very short-lived seer lore for season 15. Um, though it was a really short lore series story, um, it was by far one of the best ones I've ever read in terms of like having a, a concrete story focusing on seer. Um, so yeah, I... We'll be most definitely looking forward to season 16 and hopefully a story for season 16. Um, yeah. But, um, so then, guys, until next time we meet, it will be uh, season 16. So.